Now our next speaker also has a PSA to share. He's worked at, I think it's three dating sites and may very well have matched you with your last date via his algorithms. So he's here to share what he's learned. Please welcome up Patrick McGath. So yeah, after that conversation about data security, I'm gonna tell you about online dating sites. <laughs> uh, I've worked at OkCupid, Match.com, eHarmony, Christian Mingle, uh, more recently Tinder, an amazing industry, and I'm here to tell you how true it is and what to look out for. So what I'm gonna tell you about, uh, what are the different types of sites? Because there are lots of different kinds and they all have different business objectives. How we match you, so what sort of algorithms that are being used to actively match you to a potential mate. And how do you maximize your experience while being on these sites? So first of all, the online dating industry is huge. Um, it's north of $3 billion now. It's extremely competitive. And you have to know that everything these sites are doing to you as a user, they're doing to make money in one way, shape, or form. Keeping that in mind. So the, the analogy that I always use uh, when someone says, is it real um, or is it worth it? It's like a virtual bar scene. And you walk out, and if you're a dude, you just kick out all the other dudes, and it's just a bunch of chicks, and you get to filter out which ones you actually want to talk to behind your computer. And they actually work. So there have been surveys, and these have been done in 2010, so this number is actually closer to one in three, and we're moving asymptotically towards one to one, where you don't get to meet someone that you fall in love with and marry that you haven't already met in line some way. So this is scary, and this number is actually going up. More than 50% of all Google search queries for singles in my zip code occur on a mobile device. So these are people, and this number keeps going, and it's getting closer to 60% to 70%, etc. So there are various types of online dating sites. Ad-driven, uh, which is another name for free. Uh, Subscription-driven, so Match.com, eHarmony. Group-driven, so this is Grouper. You get a bunch of your friends and you get drunk with some other people. And native apps, geolocation-based. So ad-driven, OkCupid. Okay um, I worked at OkCupid, okay it's an amazing site. These sites take a long time to build because they really don't have a revenue model outside of making money from ad sales, but they're the ones that try to keep you on the site the longest, and they're free. Uh, subscription driven, so these are the ones you see commercials for um, where you have to actually pay to eventually message a user. Uh, they're great sites, uh, these represent about half of the total dollars made in the dating industry, and they're highly, highly competitive. Group driven, so this is Grouper, Table for Six. Um, these sites are basically meant to get you to share with your friends that you want to go on a date. And then they pay for a drink and they hope that you get drunk and have a story to tell all the other friends that you eventually bring to that site as well. So native apps, so these, these are getting really scary. You don't realize how much location data that someone collects from a Facebook connect. Every five seconds they can ping your Facebook ID and all of a sudden they know your geolocation. And so, for instance, Grindr can tell you within 50 feet that someone wants to do some sexual act with you. <laughs> Matching algorithms. So now I'm going to tell you how we actually match people in terms of why we think that you should talk to someone so that you eventually subscribe and or keep talking to them. Uh, so questions, photos, engagements, etc. So questions. So these are actually used to match you with people. So what I tell you is, and what I tell people in general is to never be fake with them. Um, because your response to them, if you respond fakely, you're going to be matched with other people who responded fakely as well. And that results in a bad date. So photos. So this is actually a number that's also going up. But if you look at the session duration on any dating site right now, 80% of that time is spent looking at photos. And now even match.coms of the world are requiring a subscription just to look at more photos. So engagement, total time on site, looking at other people's profiles and looking human. Uh, this is one of the key indicators to whether or not someone's real, someone's not a robot, and someone could potentially be worthy of going on a date with, and that's how we match you. Um, click through from an email and making profile changes. So being very active on the site actually resets the algorithm that potentially seeds you into a new matching pool. So this is one of those things that you, if you want to get more activity, just make constant upgrades to your profile. Messaging. So. These are kind of to be taken with a grain of salt because there are always these PhD math people that write a Python script that act like a bot and send hello to a thousand different people and ruin these numbers. <laughs> but basically, men don't get responded to as much. Um, age and gender. So certain Asian gender matches uh, match well. Some don't. And that's just the nature of dating in general. Um, given that, people are matched 
uh, relatively <laughs> um, <laughs> Location. So you don't want to go on a date with someone. I'm not going to respond to someone if they're 300 miles away, if they're 3,000 miles away. Uh, this one's pretty obvious. This also goes back to Grindr. You're 50 feet away, and someone wants to do X to you. So final note, um, using any of these sites, just be yourself. Uh, they're actually made to, to interact correctly with humans. Don't try to game it. And be honest with whoever you're talking with, and you'll have a good experience. Thank you.